contain some of these characteristics. Let's have some examples of communities. You can have communities in one. Examples of communities. Where do you come from? Yeah. Yeah. Regardless of any 
characteristics that you have. So when you're trying to promote, when you're protecting and preserving the health of people, you are regarding, or it's regardless, any, any attribute or any characteristic. So that's public health. So when we're talking of public health, we can consider public health for every citizen in this country. That's the public. Huh? Population. So a population, uh, you, you are trying to preserve, you are protecting, you are promoting health of people. Uh, for us, not, not for us, okay, I would say in a disorganized, in a disorganized sense, to say a community they have their own attributes and in their characteristics I mean in the family. But maybe with the population, you do all the activities regardless of that. Okay? That's the population. So you can have a population of Malawians. But all this all, all the population becomes the public. Okay? So public means the population, these are the people that you are dealing with. But within the population, you might have different communities. Okay. How do you understand? Mm -hmm. It's too much uh, making sense. So population health refers to the health of status, or health status of people mm -hmm. who are not organized mm -hmm. and have no identity as a good idea. Uh, with everyone of you as a community. But you find that each one of you 
out what their own needs. So let's try to differentiate up now between community health and personal health. Mm -hmm. so let's community health versus personal health. to describe a uh, uh, personal health or personal health activities. What do you think is involved? Personal health? Suppose, let's just say this is a household. You know, it's a you by months. Um, let's say you fall sick, right? You're suffering from malaria. Who do you think will be affected by your sickness? Yourself. Do any of the siblings have to be affected? What, what do you understand? If she falls sick, who, who will be affected? From uh, the family perspective, mm -hmm. the, 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 whole, the whole family will be the affected because uh, maybe, maybe some man to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, so that means the whole family will be in the hospital. Yes. Uh, again, take care of this. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let's say you were responsible for, I don't know, Maybe sending someone to school, escorting someone to school. The moment you fall sick, that person requires somebody else from the same family to be escorted to. It could be you were a mother, you were supposed to go and work, right? So if you fall sick, no one goes to get um, to look for money. Yeah, so personal health, uh, these are individual actions and decision making that affect the health of an individual or his or her immediate family member. So the activities that you do do not just affect you personally, but they affect the whole household. Individual actions and decisions making or decisions made that affect the health of an individual or his or her immediate family members. So these activities can may be preventive, curative. You, sometimes you may think they do not even affect your family members, but they do in one way or the other. For example, um, you're traveling in a car and putting on a seat belt. To you, you will say this is just for my own safety, right? But suppose an accident happens. When that accident happens, the whole family will be affected. So that's that's your personal safety, and that's your personal health activity. But in the long run, it's affecting your household. Even eating healthy or choosing the type of food to eat, right? That will even tell me what your siblings would, would eat. Let's say. You say, uh, you decide to eat, to just eat proteins. So let's say you are, you are a parent of the household. 
day you've chosen to lose the body of your kids. That will directly affect the other symptoms. This is not much than who you say you want to be away. See, you're the only one eating proteins. Or, definitely, you need to find who you're one in your everyone should eat. So, much as it's just for your personal gain or personal benefit, but it affects your household. So, that's about personal health activities. So, how about community health activities? Community health activities, these are activities that are aimed at um, protecting or improving the health of the population or community. Health activities aimed at protecting or improving the health of the population or community. For example, uh, protection of uh, food or water, uh, protection of water supply, uh, maintenance of accurate bed records, maintenance of accurate bed and death records. Examples for community health activities we can have maintenance of accurate birth and death records, making sure that when an individual dies or when there is a birth of the baby, that gets recorded. Protection of food and water supply are some of the examples under community health activities. Before that, we did personal health activities. So these are individual actions and decisions made that affect the health of an individual or his or her immediate family members. Some of the examples of uh, personal health include uh, choosing a balanced, choosing a balanced diet, regular wearing of a safety set, uh, sitting belt, or visiting with a physician. And with personal health, mostly. Uh, we have learned a lot of men as Bambambi, they, they lack uh, seeking medical care. But they will not choose to go to the hospital. And what happens? You ask them why you do I'm a man. I know I have mostly something like that like they feel like they are immortal or they feel like they have to always work but at the end and the whole family suffers something that they don't prevent you from avoiding okay any questions Okay, so let's move on to factors that affect the health of the community. What are some of the factors that affect the health of the community? Okay. 
You guys are not following. major groups or the major categories and uh, factors that do affect uh, community health. We have uh, social and cultural factors, individual factors, of, sorry, individual behaviors, community organization, and uh, physical factors. So let's now break uh, this four. Under physical factors, what do you think are some of the aspects that are involved under physical factors? What are some of the issues uh, to be discussed under physical factors? Physical factors.
that's disability of a person. Okay, or maybe just try to give me a scenario. What happens when you are disabled?
So I was saying that community health problems can be directly influenced by attitude, not attitude, attitude. You know attitude? Attitude, latitude, and climate. Latitude and climate. Kulimadelein and water. So hot, and they are types of maden that mean they are so prone, common in those locations. So then now? Yeah. Or oh, you come again? You want a day to sleep, so... The other areas Tanzania, Kunaduza Amadi, for those Amadi in the geography, but equator, equator, how do you pronounce it? So there is that location, I think, in Anduza, that equator. So it's a tropical rainforest, Kuma Bonvula, like throughout. So we can have different kinds of diseases around that area. Koma and Zantu, they have uh, capitalized. I'm a man who did a lot of money. You don't go much for it. But we're just, we're in a central region, yes. Koma in the middle of Toji, Koma in the middle of Mbadate, Koli Mezi, but there are a lot of farms around that area. Yeah. But that's just the advantage. But the disadvantage is that Throughout having rainy season, you know, they are prone to something like that. Yeah, to the real cases, they are also very rampant. Okay, number two, we have environment. Australia. Some body 
People who struggle for, let's say, place for cultivation and etc., that will lead to health problems or health challenges in the long run. Okay, what do others think? Hmm? Community science. So it's it's really subjective because sometimes you can have a small community that do not have the resources, right? do not have the materials for their health uh, survival, so it becomes a challenge. Sometimes we have a larger group of, we have a bigger community, let's say Lilongwe uh, Aba, Lilongwe City, right? it's a big city. We have healthcare professionals, we have good resources, good water supply, good uh, power supply, etc. etc. But you find that within there are people that uh, would not even make use of these resources. So it's really very subjective. So it depends with how you have justified it. To say, there are responsible people in that community. Right? You find they will, they will not be prone to other health hazards or health diseases. Hey. Yeah. But here they've said the larger the community, the greater its range of health problems and the greater its health number of health resources. The good thing is that when it's a big community that has got uh, a lot of health problems or health challenges, but the only good part is that they are able to access health care or health facilities within their community, within the location. We can give an example of um, cholera vaccine. Okay. So far, we have never been a vaccine about, let's just say, 5,000. Okay. But if you trace the 5,000 vaccine, I mean, we have about Is it in the cities or in rural areas? Where? In rural areas. Yeah. In Aba, yeah. And that's where Mumamuli and Mambi. You go to meet, you ask people, oh, we don't even know about it. But now that, okay, in places like Malaysia or in Brunei, those places can be getting that vaccine before you even go to us, I guess. Yes, those because they are prone, yeah? Yeah, so they they are already at high risk, so there is that bigger chance for them to at least get access to the vaccine. But we were just talking of two other main rural places where cholera is not even common or it's not a major health challenge in their community. Yeah. And sometimes you know people in, in, in cities they are okay I would say I would not say they are literate, could you own sendo or zinigna no but the understanding People can actually convince each other easily in town, unlike in rural area. And if you are doing a campaign, you you give Nina and her dad, by the end of the month, half of the school week are vaccinated. Because you can easily influence each other and you can easily understand each other. Many people in the community are, I don't want there are a lot of myths that uh, people actually produce in, in, in rural areas that you cannot even understand. Yeah, okay. So the most important thing is to effectively plan, effectively organize, and utilize the resources uh, within the communities. So regardless of your community is large or is small, but you should at least have basics, basic necessities. <coughs> the last one, industrial development. So industrial development can either have 
positive as well as negative effects on health. Right. Let's think of Kanyengu. Kanyengu right. industrial area. Omuna wene jesu ujewa. Mbapa nani wanjewa nina? Sobanka mapapse.
and in the long run that reduces the quality of life of the people. I hear Tao, my network towers, they are not supposed to to be erected uh, close to the people's houses because of radiation. Mostly, when it's close to people's houses, mm -hmm. the people are compensated. But they will not tell you good and understand. And actually, some get the money every month. But in the long run, at the work comes That's why most of the towers are supposed to be put to a building. They to some. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, let's go to number two, social and cultural factors. So social and cultural factors, these are factors um, from interaction of individuals within the community. Interaction of individuals or groups within the communities.
of beliefs, traditions, and prejudices. Let's talk of the other traditions. Um, whenever they have a gathering or wherever they are, they have to smoke, they have to drink, drink alcohol, they have to associate with women, and so on and so forth. So this, some of the traditions or beliefs put lives at stake or yeah, make the health of people, the lives of the lives of people at, at stake or at time, because of the traditions or the beliefs that people do have. It's in their belief to smoke. Smoking is part of their tradition, but smoking is not a good activity. So that becomes a health hazard. Other people practice it because it's their tradition. Whenever they meet, they have to smoke. Whenever they meet, they have to bring alcohol. Surprise? No, I don't want to. Okay, so with those activities, with those that type of socialization, put group uh, some group or certain group of people at risk. Right. Okay. And the other traditions, the other type of foods that you're not allowed to consume. You could be prohibited to eat. Sorry? Meat. Meat. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Yeah. So that's it about other beliefs, the traditions and prejudices. So how about economy? Number two, we have economy. What do you mean when you say economy? Or what is the relationship of economy and health status of people? Mm -hmm. When your economic status is not high, mm -hmm. you can have problems. Let's say you don't have money to talk to. Mm. It can lead to your health problems. Okay. So, yes, it directly affects your... Okay. I think we're just surprised that there are no troubles here. <laughs> Okay. When people's economy improve, that directly affects the way uh, someone would associate and someone would live. Right? If you have unpaid money, suppose you foresee, you can easily access better health care, right? And life when you do not have money. And just as she has said, if you have adequate money or you have better income, you can actually decide on the type of foods to buy or to access. Yeah. But sometimes when the economy is not stable, when people do not have adequate money, that leads them to sometimes buying unnecessary or yeah, unnecessary materials that are Health, that could be health hazards. Sometimes it's also by service. When people have a lot of money, they will indulge themselves into bad behavior. Because you have a lot of money, you can indulge yourself into excessive alcohol drinking. I mean, you have you have a good money, mm -hmm. yeah. so it's ideal. But in in, in most cases. When you have money, I mean, the money talks, eh? it gives you power, it gives you the choice on the type of food to be involved in. And mostly, in, 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 in most African countries, we believe we have fast foods, so that will describe you as Mkwanda Lab. Eh? How would you know who you want to use in drama in this place? Ask at your KFC, ask at your, or even here. I mean, that's here. Mm. That's here. Not green, most. Yes, yes. And who does that in drum? Who does it like chipsy? 
As if you have a choice, you have But in the long run, you find you, you become obese, you become hypertension, you become diabetic. So it's not even a good thing for someone who is ill. But that's what happens when you have money. But the money should give you the power to decide on health or yeah, the type of healthy foods that you are supposed to consume. Right. Yeah. That should enable you to adequately uh, adequately involve yourself in exercises, should give you access to good or better medical health care. You can easily go for a checkup and so on and so forth. So they have said that employers usually find it increasingly difficult to provide equal benefits uh, for their employees as their income drops. The unemployed and underemployed face poverty and deteriorating health. That's a cumulative effect of an economic downturn significantly affects the health of the community. Or we can have an overview. You say, uh, suppose uh, the government has adequate, adequate funding resources. They would go education, adequately fund, for agriculture, for health, all sectors, they will adequately fund it. That will make an improved living standard or improved living conditions for people. But you find when there are few resources, but sometimes the budget is cut, can for health, can be cut budget for education, can for agriculture, and other sectors. Okay. Then politics as a factor under social and cultural factors. Anyone who would like to say something about politics? Politically, that's how it works. When you're in power, 
people from your location do benefit a lot since it, it's, it doesn't even take a lot of time for your ideas to be accepted and implemented and so on and so on. And like if you're not politically affiliated. Okay, so here they've said that those who happen to be in political office, either nationally or locally, can improve or jeopardize the health of their community by the decisions they make. So much as other people say, no, I'm not, I'm not into politics, I'm not a political being, but almost most of the decisions are made by the government. They are the ones who decide. What are some of them? They will, they will decide on the budget of, for health. Yeah. So it means living a car. Therefore, education. Yeah. All aspects. Yeah. So if they make poor decisions on top there, each and every person, even in the I mean, I'm going to be in a small of the house and that will be directly affected. Okay. So they have said that even local politicians also influence the health of their communities. Each time they vote on health related measures brought before them. On the other hand, the other religious communities, they actively address moral and ethical issues. Issues to do with abortion, premarital intercourse, homosexuality, they do address all those. But other religions, uh, they do not. And other religions do teach uh, promoting codes of uh, living for their members. So it's obvious that uh, religion highly affect the health of people. And mostly, people believe things from their church, from their religious gathering. If they are told to say, uh, they are told to say, people will do that. And they will believe it. So let's not underestimate oh. the power of uh, the religion. Same as how these things are not vaccine, what you know, whatever. It's like Korea was never here, just go here and then go to the house, they say, you know, I said, I'm not here. Korea was not here. I mean, it's more like how people are, I mean, how they go to speak the issue, what you call it, uh, vaccination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Hmm? It's very right, that's the perception of people out there. Yeah. Because they, they are saying that for the first time it was probably dealing with the rich people. Mm-hmm. Now what change is trying to bring the poor people mm-hmm. for the yeah. yeah, so the same thing I was saying would be okay. Mm-hmm. If you uh, issue a letter in China, they have vaccination, it would be okay, the vaccination of their and in the faces of so many people that like many people you know, very people will never really move there with the people. Some and they go in, they are so prone to issue all my issues are all there and mm-hmm. then I'm not talking about the vaccination. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
for reaching their goals. Develop and implement strategies for reaching their goals collectively. For reaching their goals collectively. So key words there, your communities identify common problems or goals to mobilize resources. So they do not do this as one person, but they do it as a community, as one thing. And why do you think it's important to mobilize resources as a community? Why do you think it's important to mobilize resources as a community? To give a sense of ownership to everyone. Sense of ownership. Sense of ownership leads to sustainability. You're able to sustain, to protect the development and activity. And with uh, togetherness, we have increased effectiveness of productivity. Increased effectiveness of productivity. Ownership, sustainability, effectiveness and productivity. There is reduction in duplication of efforts. Reduction in duplication of efforts. So you find that, uh, let's say, you agree. How can you have portable water supply? So you focus doing that. Unlike uh, some people in the community, you're thinking of bringing water supply through pipes. You know, say, ah, I came to Umbeji team. So it's the same portable water supply on different strategies. Then that's about duplication. Right? Doing different things. Okay. And you are avoiding imposition of solutions. Avoiding imposition of solutions. Why do you think it's not good to impose a solution? Why do you think it's important not to impose a solution to people in the community? Why should people think of a solution themselves? Sometimes you can come from an innovation which is not relevant to the, the situation of the community. Yeah. Let's say people say uh, in the community in Mongolia, we are having challenges, our lives are poor, we want, uh, and you, you just say, okay, uh, people in Mongolia. So let the people decide. And mostly people in rural areas are kind of brighter ideas. You go to the village, you ask a chief who plan now about his or her village. You'll be impressed. But mostly organizations are car with already preconceived ideas. Eh? But I mean, it's good to go to them and ask what you want. So you compromise, okay? Let's do this. Okay. And the last factor is individual behavior. So, behavior of the individual community members contributes to the health of the entire community. Behavior. Individual community members. Contributes to the health of the entire community. Ever heard of very community?
Let's try the Google. Mm. Let's try the Google. Oh, here you go. Mm. 
ngombe zijakani zina manga like how the army would do and zima shinga like kumanga koma so you did when it comes you can easily fight so and when any buku what they would not okay sanga vlad sema za kaminari gadi because of the koma ni mjana mbili so that's why I'm telling you, I'm being mad when I'm doing vaccine. I don't mean like I'm doing it. They feel when I'm like 20% or 10%, I'm not even kidding in the sun. So I'm going to go out this minute. Hey! I'm going to go out this minute. I'm going to go out this minute. But we need a larger percentage for why the community is working. You know how crazy it was at first. Okay, so when the issue that the concerted effort of many, if not most of the individuals in the community, to make a program work. So, for example, in the end the Go Green campaign, let's say, Alliance, 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 or something like that. It will, it will be a better thing, or it will, make, it will be achievable if almost everyone, or a larger group of people do that. They see they will not just go green by just you leave your own body or own country, but I have a lot So even with herd immunity, herd immunity is the resistance of a population to the spread of an infectious agent based on the immunity of a high proportion of individuals. When a high proportion of individuals have gotten immunized, the very few will get protected. Factors that influence uh, health in the community. We have the four factors, but four but many physical factors, community organization, social and cultural factors, as well as individual behaviors. Public health, community health, community health, community health faces um, personal health. Any questions?
Thank <laughs> you.